celebrating Carroll County History Week by talking with a variety of longtime residents of the area. Today we're chatting with Ed Beers. Ed, maybe you could tell me a little bit about where you grew up in Carroll County, what the circumstances were. Well, I was born on Milton Avenue in Westminster in a house that belonged to my maternal grandmother. A little interesting side note, she took her money out of the bank in 1928 to buy that house and then the banks crashed. She was a single mother and uh, I lived there till I was three when my parents married and my dad lived there with them and worked on the farm which belonged to his father just outside of Westminster and I was about th three we moved out to the farm. And that no, that farm was just west of Western Maryland College, what was Western Maryland College, and lived there until 1965, so I grew up there. There been any changes to that farm? <laughs> yes, it's shopping centers and houses. Surrounded by houses, yeah. Covered by houses. 1965. Can you tell us about the farm? Uh, well, at the time we lived there, we were kind of out in the country, even though we were near town. We had a lane that was probably, we had three ways to get out of there, and it was about a half mile or more either way. And none, none of them were bad weather roads. <laughs> the one, one we could use in the wintertime, and you could almost get home usually. The steep hill. We called it the Hog House Hill. That was just uh, before you got up to the buildings, and it was pretty steep and just had field stone in it. And sometimes you couldn't get up, and my mother would do this to get the car up. But sometimes we had to walk. We could get out, but we didn't always get back in. You grew up there with, how, do you have brothers, sisters? No, only child. You were an only child? Yes. I I pretty much entertained myself. Of course, I liked to hang around with what was going on on the farm, which was nice. There was plenty to get into <laughs> and to, to do. And uh, so I went to school. I just got up and, hung, you know, watched or got involved with whatever was going on. And then, uh, of course, when I got older, I had chores to do little jobs to do, fed the pigs, and gathered eggs, and fed calves, and things like that. Was there anyone else to help on the farm? That's a lot of work for just your dad. Well, my mother worked very hard as well, and my grandfather, after dad took over the farm, worked for him for a few years, and would have probably kept on with that, uh, but at the time, the Social Security rules said that you could not pay in to Social Security on a relative. So he had to go get a job in town and over at Balkers and other places to get his credits, which he only did for a few years. And uh, we did have, from time to time, some hired help. It was a double house, and the help lived in the other half of the house. My grandparents had moved to town. My dad's cousin worked for him for a few years, and another fellow worked for a few years, and then we had a gentleman that was a ag student at Cornell, and he was a city boy, and he had to have some farm experience to get his degree, and the county agent, Mr. Burns, came out there and wanted Dad to take him on for the summer. He was taking some summer courses at Western Maryland College. He turned out to be quite a character, but anyway, he workforce for a summer and then the next summer he came back with his Long Island debutante wife <laughs> and uh, didn't know how to boil water and uh, spent that summer with us and we kept in touch with him over all the years. First four years, I went to West End Elementary, and I bet you couldn't find it. There's a 
West Main Street, Pennsylvania Avenue, and Union Street. They form a triangle. And the old college power plant was down there and they burned coal to heat all the buildings. And it's back in there in the alley. And it was four grades and four classes. Do you remember any teachers or anything that? Miss mm, Bankard, uh, Miss Poist was my first grade teacher. Fortunately, because there was a lady, Mrs. Shoemaker, that had a kindergarten, and a few of the advantaged kids got to go to kindergarten, <laughs> and they knew stuff that I didn't know. And when the teacher would ask me anything, I said, I don't know, I didn't go to kindergarten. But she happened to know the family, so she knew I wasn't that dumb, so <laughs> she got me off to a good start. And Miss Bankert was the principal, and she could stare a hole right through you. <laughs> and I don't really remember the other grade teachers particularly. Mm -hmm. And then fifth grade and sixth grade, I went up on Center Street. So it was then called uh, Westminster Elementary. Mm -hmm. But uh, my dad went to high school there. They condemned the building and he took one story off and it's still there, but I went there. Then sixth grade, we went over to Westminster High School on Longwell Avenue. Oh. Six sixth grades at high school. That was, that was a big event, you know, when you went over there. We actually had a cafeteria and a gymnasium and all kind of stuff that we didn't ever have before. What was your first job in Carroll County? Uh, Carroll County? Yeah. Uh, well, when I got out of high school, I went to Florida. And when I married and came back, I uh, helped my dad on the farm and the summertime, and then in the, because our dairy operation wasn't real large at the time, uh, I took a job as a mechanic at W.H. Davis down at the truck center on 140 as a mechanic during the winter, and they actually ran a night crew to service gas and electric trucks and stuff like that. I wanted to work the night crew, and the foreman told me I couldn't work it daytime and nighttime too so then I, so then I work, went to work for Ralph Leckron at a golf station at the Forks there at Pennsylvania Avenue and Main Street and worked there evenings and weekends and worked on the farm. So you didn't have much time for entertainment? Not at that point. Uh -huh. <laughs> I had more when I was before I got married. <laughs> Well, when I was little, I entertained myself. I had a wagon and a tricycle and a scooter. <laughs> and of course, I always liked what was going on around the farm and everything. And then I guess uh, in the evenings, I liked to had a big old Atwater Kent radio and I'd listen to dramas on the radio until bedtime, which was early. And then in the winter would go sledding. And uh, then as I got older, I got a at some point I got an electric train and I spent a lot of time playing with that. And I had a friend who lived out the, on West Main out the end of one of our driveways. He was a year younger than me. We were like brothers. He moved there, I guess, when I was in the fifth grade, sixth grade. And uh, his dad taught at the seminary at the college at the time. And I'd, uh, we had a big room in the house. It was a double house, and nobody lived on the other side. And we had both our train sets set up together in a big platform in that room. They stayed up all year round. And then in the winter, we Saturdays and stuff, we'd go in there and fool with those. And because uh, I was involved in 4-H when I got to be 9 or 10. And uh, a little older, why we go to Frock's swimming pool some and then when I drove we'd go to drive in movies and school dances and football games and basketball games. So that's pretty much like a, a typical team today would be doing some of the games and, and things like that. Yeah they got a lot more activities today. They complain there's nothing for the kids to do but oh, yeah. <laughs> I told my daughter I never said that <laughs> because they'd find some yeah, you know, they have a lot more to, to choose from, but mm -hmm. yeah, that, our, our, our activities were centered around 
church activities, 4-H activities, and school activities. What did you do in 4-H? Well, I had a dairy project. And I actually had animals that were mine that I uh, raised from the time they were a calf, and you had to keep records on their rate of growth and their what, how much you fed them and all to learn a little record keeping and then showed at the different shows around. No, I don't. There are cattle on the farm, but they're not mine. Mm -hmm. I uh, sold them several years ago. Mm -hmm. When you were growing up on the farm, where did, um, where did you go to for shopping, like the groceries or clothes? Or we, went to, we went to downtown Westminster. And what was in downtown Westminster? Oh, it was J.C. Penney's. It was Mather's. It was the Hubs Men's Store. At one time, the co-op was grocery store was downtown. William F. Myers was on the corner of Liberty and Green Streets. My mother actually cashiered there before I was born and worked there. Um, she was Albert's Hardware, Smith and Gray Snyder Lumber, right in the right in the middle. You turned off of Main Street and went in the office and went through a tunnel and went back into the lumber yard back where the fire department is now. Oh. Where that is. Well, it's a floor floor covering place in there now. Uh -huh. Wheeler floor fashions? Yeah. That's Carpet place, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And back behind there, of course, that's where the fire hall is. That's where the actual lumber yard was when you got your got your yard man and went out there and picked up your lube. What were, where was your favorite place to go in Carroll County when you were growing up? Well, I liked to go when I was little. I don't, we used to go to the county fair up at Tawnytown when it was held up there where it's a Fairgrounds Village shopping center now. It was old fairgrounds there. They actually had a racetrack and a grandstand and used to have uh, horse races there at one time. And they held the county fair up there and the dad, we'd go and get to see all the latest farm machinery. And of course then later on, I, when I showed in 4-H, why well, I took, took animals up there to show before the fair moved to Westminster. When did it move to Westminster? Mm, about 1956. They, uh, it was uh, Landon Burns, the county agent's dream of having an agricultural center here in the county, and, well, and then the, and the farm museum. He was instrumental in getting that started as well. My dad served on that board of directors for a number of years and uh, acquired that property up there, and mo we, all the original buildings were built with, except for the what they call Burns Hall, were all built volunteer labor farmers hauled the logs of the sawmill and got them sawed and put the sheds up and everything. Oh. Oh. Of course, that's changed a lot now. Well, I say I went to the fair. Went to Farm Bureau used to have a county picnic at Big Pike Creek Park, and that was fun. Mm -hmm. My mother had a college classmate that lived in New Windsor, right by the railroad, almost to the railroad tracks, and they would take me to Westminster and put me on the train, and I'd go to New Windsor <laughs> and spend a few days up there, and she'd gather up other kids, and then I just. You know, I had mixed feelings about it. There was a lot of neat things to do. We'd ride down the roller down there at the old Seal Test Creamery where they used to roll the milk cans back out and put uh, straight pins on the railroad track so when the train ran over them and make them stick together and make little scissors. And then there was a Hudson dealer across the street and you could go play in the junk cars. The only drawback was she made me take a bath at least once a day. <laughs> And it was actually a movie theater in New Windsor. And one day she gave me a quarter 
I guess I was about five years old and sent me to the movies. It was Robin Hood. And I got inside in the dark in the daytime and slept through most of it. And then when I went to school, everybody was raving about Robin Hood and I didn't even watch it. <laughs> that was one of the few movies I ever went to see. I think when I was a little older, my parents took me to see Walt Disney's Song of the South at the Carroll Theater, but we didn't go to the movies. What did you do when you were a teenager? Well, I can't tell you all that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when I was a teenager, I, you know, liked to ride around and, like I say, I went to school football games and had a buddy with a new car and a golf credit card, so we'd go to the away games. That was a strange, a rarity then. People didn't have credit cards. I think it was just for gas. <laughs> and uh, basketball games, and of course, I was in the camera club at school and we'd go to the basketball games and take pictures, a couple of us. And I was on stage crew, so whenever they did productions, I worked with that. And, and uh, was involved with whatever 4-H, usually just a monthly meeting during the most of the year other than fair time and, and all. But uh, that was about the size of it. Well, that said, what did I like? And I liked, I did like everything, and I still do because I didn't have anything to judge it by. I never felt, I guess you used to think I'd like to have a brother, but then I sort of gained one with my buddy up there, and he'd come home at, with me after school and, you know, help me, and we'd do chores together, and he'd come work on the farm in the summertime and everything, and we hung out together a lot. And you know, his mom was our Cub Scout leader and so on. So I really, I don't, I don't see any drawbacks, that I've nothing, there's nothing I miss. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that you would like to change about Carroll County today? Well, I guess I'd kind of make it more like it used to be, but I can't be one of those people. <laughs> the ones that moved here last year say that, so uh, mm -hmm. that sort of annoys me a little because their house is in the middle of what used to be a cornfield too. <laughs> Hundred and seventy. Mm -hmm. But you're not farming it. You have it's somebody. it's leased to the neighbors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you think back on your whole life growing up, what was your most vivid memory? You know, I gave that a little thought. V E Day. Mm -hmm. I was in grade school, and you knew about the war because you had rationing, you had gas rationing, you couldn't buy tires, you couldn't buy machinery, you couldn't buy anything, and you know, about the, everything was about the war. And I walked home from school because that was, didn't have to walk any further across the golf course than I did from where the bus dropped me off out at the end of the lane. And I walked home, and I remember a newspaper vendor on the street was extra put out an extra edition, read all about you seeing the old movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and 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 although I was very young, I realized the the implications of that. And then of course when they built Route one forty that was a sort of a big event because the old road to Baltimore wasn't much fun. And of course the fact that it came through our farm caddy cornered from one corner to the other which is part of the reason we moved. And then when they did 31 down there in the bottom and our cow pasture was then across the road from 140 and we had to take cows across the road. Carefully. Well, yeah, you had to open the gate and run out in the road and wave the flag and stop everybody and then go back and chase them across. We only did it in daylight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I grew up in the Westminster Church of the Brethren. Okay. And I now am a member of the Hampstead Baptist Church. Did you attend functions and things at the church? 
Yeah. Well, they had, yeah, well, we had youth group and went to church, Sunday school and church, vacation Bible school. There was a family by the name of Dittman. They had a big house up on Washington Road, and Mrs. Dittman would have a picnic for all the Sunday school kids in the summer. That, that was a big event. <laughs> and uh, see, back then we were hard to please. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, whatever. And uh, youth went to youth conference, a lot of things like that. Well, it's picturesque. Uh, there's a lot of historic and scenic things around to see. Uh, if they were thinking about moving here, I'd say we have a, a relatively good school system. Um, people are generally friendly. Not now in the old days, it, you. You knew everybody, or they—they they knew who you were, <laughs> and or, or you knew family. You know, I mean, we're all related. I remember when I was first married, and you know, what, what functions we went to, and my wife decided that I was related to everybody in Carroll County. And of course, now I can go to Balkers and maybe not see anybody I know. Yeah, that has been a big change. And so, and people, they commute, so they really don't. You know, some people commonly want to fish in the pond or, you know, want to, you know, come or talk to you about something or another or so on. But your neighbors now really don't, I don't think they were really interested in being neighborly with their neighbors. They like to keep to themselves. Mm -hmm. They have their own life. Mm -hmm. Is there anything special that you'd like to share with us about your memories of Carroll County? Hmm. I can't think of anything except I, you know, I really enjoyed growing up. I think I was very fortunate to grow up on the farm. I had friends and kids that lived in town, and they had activities and and life and did things. And a lot of them would come out to the farm because they thought that was great fun, and at least for a little while. And uh, my mom used to call me Tom Sawyer because guys would. When I got older, they'd want me to go somewhere with them. And, well, we got to pick these stones back in the day when you had to pick stones out of the field. We ought to do that first or unload this load of straw, and then they'd chip in and help me. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, it, was, it was very enjoyable. And, you know, uh, don't, didn't really, don't really see any downside to, to my experiences growing up. Thank you for the opportunity. I enjoyed it.